Everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championship. Checking team number 4499, the Highlanders. This is the redemption year for Highlanders after four finalists last year. They already have three blue banners, three wins, and they're looking phenomenal here at the World Championship. Take a look at 4499, what they have to offer. I love this entire robot as they go through. Uh, a little bit, a couple of new additions we'll be talking about as well on the robot. And I love to hear about some of the programming code that's going to. We'll take a look at their uh, driver station as well, too, for a little bit more. Let's talk more about the Highlanders coming up on behind behind the bumpers. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Andy Mark has parts and products designed specifically for first through box competition and first tech challenge teams. Many Andy Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit andymark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Tyler, we're going to start out with this massive arm that you have on your robot. So talking about some of the composition of it, I know we'll demo a little bit as well. We'll kind of work our way through your scoring journey. Sure. So we have your standard telescoping pink arm. So we have our pivot point in the middle here, which allows us to tip the arm to both sides of the robot. Um, so we can pick up and place game pieces from both sides of the robot, um, which is really helpful, especially in defense. You don't need to worry about orienting your robot before oh, you sure. go score or to the feeder station. You're there and then you just grab the game object and come back and score. Um, so yeah, we have a two stage cascade rigged elevator here. Um, and then we're on a pivot here. One of the unique things we do with our pivot is um, use this worm drive gearbox right here. Uh, so this allows us to mechanically hold position when we have the arm out on a big lever arm. Um, so programmers don't really have to do a whole lot to hold position using the motors. It's all done mechanically through that gearbox. So in addition to that, we have, we like to call it our touch and own it intake. So yeah. we just have our two rollers here. It's a silicone rubber sleeve over just a carbon fiber rod here with these 3D printed um, pulley and inserts. So this allows us to pick up both cones and cubes from the field just by using these two rollers here. Um, aside from that, we also have our wrist mechanism, which can actuate the entire intake 180 degrees. So this allows us to, um, in addition to the pivot down here, pick up and place game pieces on both sides of the robot. Uh, we made sure to keep both of our motors in a fixed position so we weren't having to swing our heavy intake motor around, um, which is really helpful. And we did that just through using basically a dead axle for the spinning of the rollers and then a separate um, pulley system for the actuation of our wrist here. I noticed on, uh, from your gearing on here, you do have some that are 3D printed and some that are still going with like a, a metal gear uh, on there. So is that just based on how much uh, torque you're putting into it or like the strain on it? Right, so this gear here, you got the herringbone and this is um, just to connect to our absolute encoder here. Gotcha. Um, so we can do wrist positions at all time. And then if we have a belt that were to skip on our wrist, um, this encoder is directly connected to the intake, not necessarily through the axle down here. Um, so we can keep the position good no matter if we were to accidentally skip a wrist through a hard impact. One of the things I really like about your robot this year is when your arm is coming out, I know we'll show that off in just a little bit, but a lot of teams, like with the type of arm you have, we're seeing like extensions out to here or something like that, right? Your team seems to stay really within its, its bounds to keep your COG low uh, as well. Was that when you were looking at designing your robot, was that always something in front of mind uh, for your team? Was just like, hey, we're not gonna extend out very far? Yeah, we knew that we really wanted to try to keep a low center of gravity. Um, and with a game we're having to do pick and place, so it's obviously a little bit harder than a shooting game. Sure. Um, so we really tried to make sure everything up high was very light and everything down low was solid. We actually installed after our first regional, two solid steel beams on our chassis here. So on the front and the back, the yeah. long sides. Um, How much ballast you got there? How much the weigh? I think it's about a 12 pound addition. Okay. So that really enables us with sudden acceleration and deceleration to stay flat against the ground while we're driving and really going fast across the field. Can we see the arm come out? Maybe just show us a couple different positions for that. And kind of tell me what's going on as we see the robot moving. Right, so I think Adarsh is gonna deploy our shelf preset. So we really like to grab game pieces off of the um, double feeder station shelves. We can get both cones and cubes from there. It allows our cycle times to be really fast. We just drive into it and it grabs the top roller, sucks it in. So I can throw a game object in if you wanna go out Adarsh. 
So yeah, that's our cones right there. And then I can also demonstrate a speed here. I love how much compression you're putting on that cube, by the way. Uh, when you got, I'm sure you've done tons of testing to make sure you're not popping stuff, but that's gotta be close to the limit for that. Yeah, uh, in addition, we also added was this kind of carbon fiber catching um, contraption here. So we were seeing that, especially at our shop, if we had a cube that went a little bit underinflated, it could sometimes slip through the rollers and then just fall out. So this just make sure that doesn't happen. But we've seen um, through our regionals that on the field, they try to keep those things really into spec. So we really haven't run into an issue as far as that. Last thing I want to cover on this is obviously a new addition uh, on here is this uh, really wide intake. Now, I noticed there's not really uh, like a transfer or anything like that. So I'm guessing you're looking at scoring low with that or what are you doing from a strategy on that standpoint? Right. So this is designed just to score low cubes. So when we're in the middle of the field, we find putting our arm down takes more time than sure. if we just had a full width intake that we could grab things. And especially with the new supercharge addition to the game, this just allows us to at the end of the match quickly be able to score a game piece from any side of the field any side of the robot, excuse me. And you're doing that exclusively for cubes? Yes, it's exclusively for cubes. When uh, you're looking at, uh, uh, I know we're gonna get in programming just a little bit, is that something that, uh, actually I'll just hand over to Dark Shock about that. Sure. Uh, is this playing in for you in regards to autonomous at all, or are you solely focused on teleop for this? So we only focus for, uh, on this during teleop. Um, what we noticed was uh, with the arm, it's really hard to grab stuff from the center of the field, especially with this not being full width. Sure. Um, and it just kind of struggled. It was kind of a beacon for defenders. So um, we really wanted something that was full width, was able to take a hit without you know risking anything else on the robot. So we added this um, on the side and we just kept our autos the same. We just retuned them with the additional weight. Let's talk a bit more about some of the programming and uh, features of this robot for that sim. I mean, obviously very mechanically inclined this robot is, but you've done so much to get yourselves those three blue banners as well. So talk to me more about it. So um, I think one of the, the big things is we have custom swerve code and we also uh, do our own path generation. Um, so we really want like a, a fluid path throughout um, our autonomous. Um, so essentially we can place a bunch of points and our pathing tool will actually optimize them um, and we can view them before we ever get to the field. We can actually see what the path would look like. Um, and we're also able to really finely adjust these points. So if we notice, you know, at a competition, we're slightly off, we can slowly adjust those points to fit our path better. Um, one of the things that we noticed last year um, was that even with a full width intake, it's fairly easy and autonomous to still miss a piece. Um, so one of the things that we did proactively this year with a smaller intake was we actually added a camera into the system. So we actually do cube tracking on a limelight um, during our autonomous. So we'll go close to the cube and um, despite like slight differences to a field compared to our home field, um, we'll actually be able to just use a camera to turn into a target and grab it. Um, there's a few other things that we like to do in teleop um, to make uh, our driver's lives the easy, as easy as possible. Um, one of the things is we vibrate controllers and change the lights when we grab a, a game object. So I'll just show that right now. Um, so the lights uh, on the superstructure should change and the controller actually vibrates when we have a game object. Um, so across the field, when it's fairly difficult to see um, when we have an object or not, it'll actually do that. And it does the same thing for the ground intake as well. You know, that's really interesting. I don't know if I've heard of other teams that are doing that. I'm trying to think back then, but that seems like just such a simple thing that it's so yeah. effective on that. Like, you're right, why are more teams not doing something yeah. like that? That's really yeah. cool on that. Uh, yeah, Highlanders overall, what an incredible machine uh, you have built this year. Congratulations on the incredible success that you've had as well. Thank you so much for telling us all about your robot and wish you best of luck here at Championships. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-paced camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.